Hi, I'm Erica Film My Phone, and welcome to another video. Today we are finally, finally, finally getting into Motomami from Rosalia, the third studio album from her, and I'm so excited to get into this album. I really wanted to pretty much when it was released. However, it is 16 songs, and I had so many photos on my phone because I did a spring break trip right before Motomami, and now I finally have offloaded those and dealt with some videos that took up less space because it does take me a while to do a lot of foreign language albums, especially since it was 16. I was like, okay, give myself the time I need. And now is the time for us to finally, finally, finally listen to what I'm sure is going to be an incredible body of work. I'm so excited. We've heard Sayoko and La Fama, which are on the front side of the album, and I technically kind of heard Hentai because apparently that was a cover that Lord did at the show that I was at. I didn't know what she was singing at that time. I was very confused and it was hard to understand what she was singing at that point because some of it's not in English. So I really couldn't tell you really what that song exactly sounds like. I just remember the so good, but I remember in Lord's voice, not Rosalia's. So. That one, we kind of do have a little bit of knowledge. But the rest of the album is a complete mystery, and so I'm very excited to just really see all that is in store on Motomami. But anyway, let's just get into it. Track number one is Sayoko, a song I have heard, but it's been a minute, so let's hear it again. It's Sayoko. Sayoko, papi, Sayoko. Oh no. Iconic. Make up the drag queen who stands for homo. I just like this part. It just makes me want to fight someone. Ooh. Oh yeah. Then there's that switch up. Let's get into it. Yeah. Iconic. So that was Sayoko. A song we've heard. A song we enjoy. It's fun. It's all about transformation. And I think that's going to a whole pretty good as an opener probably for this record just because it seems like a lot of the talk around Motomami is about transforming. This is her first album since gaining a ton of popularity from collaborations and getting involved in the reggaeton scene. Like I think a lot of that all happened in 2019-ish and so El Malquera, while there were some songs that people really enjoyed from there, like retrospectively. I think this album was much more highly anticipated and so I think everyone definitely was in for a ride. I am now going to be in for the ride. Track number two is Candy. Okay, starting Cynthia. Oh, it's some Spanglish. Oh, she's going to get gorgeous and soft. Okay, now we got some beat going. Na 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 na. Okay. Oh, I think I heard some lower voices that I can't quite make out. Pero tu, but you. It sounds like no, no more holding me down. It's not No More Holding Me Down, it's definitely something in Spanish that I can't decipher. I know some Spanish, but it's not the best. Oh, just cuts off. So that was Candy, and that was a chill little number. It was very quiet. I already know that this is an album I'm going to have to listen to again in headphones. I packed my speaker away because I'm moving very soon. So I don't have the capabilities of making a more speaker sound right now. So I'm very excited to use my headphones to help me that when I listen to this project before again, getting it out to you. In this song, Rosalia, and it might just be the speaker, but I'm just gonna say it's Rosalia. Rosalia talks about this former lover of hers and that lover of hers definitely hasn't forgotten about her since they've parted ways. However, she's thinking, I don't remember your face. I don't remember the shape of your body, even if I tried. 
there's really nothing left between you and me. She has definitely moved on. She's transformed and she has evolved past the need for that person. Good for her. I like the song, especially message wise. It's a good vibe, but I don't know sonically quite yet. It was again, pretty quiet. And so I think I need to hear it when I can really vibe to it more like in my headphones and really go off on it. Track numero tres, sorry about not introducing uno and dos in Espanol, pero uh, track numero tres uh, es La Fama featuring The Weeknd. And I've heard the song before, but I'm excited to hear it again in the context of the album. I used to hate that, and now I vibe with that. Mm -mm -mm. Her voice is already so delicate again. Oh, his voice comes in so soft and velvety. There you go. So that was La Fama and a good song. I think I might like it now better than Sayoko before. And this is the first time where I thought that. I think I used to think that I like Sayoko better than I actually do. And I think I like La Fama more than I previously did. La Fama has catchiness to it, the do 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 and mm 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 like with the the humming or the beat making with your mouth. It's very catchy. Very, very catchy. Although I do think the Transformo riff during Sayoko hits different. Anyway, you'll see my final ranking of the songs at the end anyway. So we can figure that out then. But the song is very enjoyable. It's all about fame being a rough, cruel lover. And I think I talked about it a lot more on my reaction to La Fama, so you can go check that out if you'd like. But it's interesting hearing these different messages. I don't think this album follows at least as neatly of a story as El Mal Carrera did, where each was like an actual chapter. She didn't put chapters or capitulos on these, so it's not going to be as at least linear of a story, but it is still a concept. And I saw that it is a female figure like finding herself or finding her worth or something like that, which I'm all for. But now that we don't have any songs that I actually know pretty well. I'm excited to see really where the album leads to. Track number cuatro, Bulerias. Oh, I already hear that percussion in the background. I like that. Oh, is there some shots from the crowd? I feel like she's spitting some bars right now, but I wish I could make them out. Oh, this part feels like Kuroke. Is that Versace? Oh, she is really singing for us. This feels almost Diplotas. Oh, her voice is absolutely gorgeous here. Ooh, it sounds like a whole chorus of voices and clapping. Oh, I like what she's doing now. I think she was saying kitty cat, kitty cat, but I don't think that's it. Those are startling. <laughs> Quick shout out to whoever did all the English translations for Motomami on Genius Lyrics. I appreciate you so much. So that was Bulerias, and I really like that one. That one just felt nice, raw, pure flamenco Rosalia, but it's actually interesting lyrically what it's about because she's talking about even if I'm wearing a Versace tracksuit or I'm just like a traditional flamenco dancer, I'm still a flamenco singer at heart. I am still very much myself. Don't tell me I'm not. It really is giving the energy of, even though I'm transforming, I'm still me. And so I'm going to thank everyone who is helping me on this journey. Now get out of my way. That is the essence of these lyrics. And it's really just iconic. She's saying she can sing really well. And she can. She's able to go into reggaeton and other genres while still being a flamenco singer 
still being a cantora and still being someone who can do what she wants, essentially. She is giving a very feminist statement towards this sense that, oh, if you are going to do traditional music, you have to think traditionally and conservatively. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I am going to make music that's innovative and interesting and fuse this traditional music that I do love with other music that might not be seen as traditional. But it's just a tradition elsewhere. But yeah, I really vibe with this song. Bulaterius translates to this flamenco fast rhythm that I think she probably was singing on top of during this. So I think this is really like a, a good F you to anyone who is trying to critique her or hold her back. And I will not hold Rosalia back. <laughs> Track numero cinco, Chicken Teriyaki. I know there was a music video for this one, but I didn't see it. So if you want me to watch the music video for this or if there's any other music videos, I can do that after this album reaction comes out. Oh. I like this vibe. Okay. Reggaeton it. I thought the song would have some English in it because it's called Chicken Teriyaki, but I think I might be mistaken. I don't know what she's talking about Chicken Teriyaki here. Oh, who was that? Oh, Drag Queen again? Another reference? Love you. Chicken Teriyaki. I do really like that beat. It's good, but it's over. So that was Chicken Teriyaki, and that was a fun song. It's reggaeton, we're in it, and she is flexing. <laughs> All right, pop off. It's what we wanted her to do, let's be honest. Rosalia is such a queen. She's going to really serve it here. The song is about a trip to New York, and she's dressing however she wants. Too. She wants a chain that will break her bank account, but it seems like it's unlikely, I guess, for her to break her bank account because she's got so much money. She'll pay for dinner. She'll go skating. She'll do whatever the heck she wants. She's Rosalia. Gosh dang it. The reference of chicken teriyaki is pati naki chicken teriyaki. And I think that means parati, so for you. And then naki, it's some expression either in Spanish or Japanese. Neither of which are languages I'm that familiar with, but she is saying, oh, really don't worry about it. I'm giving you ch your chicken teriyaki. You don't have to worry about money when you're with me because I'm flexing with my fame and my money. She also makes another reference to drag queens. She's saying like, they're throwing shade like drag queens. And I, I think that's funny. It's iconic. It's camp. We love it. <laughs> I kind of want to see the music video for this because I feel like it would be very... Iconic. Track numero seis, Hentai. I again heard this song in part live during my time seeing Lord at Radio City Music Hall, which was amazing. I loved it so much seeing her that I really wasn't planning on listening to a Rosalia song. And since I hadn't heard it yet, I really didn't know what was going on and I was just trying to enjoy the moment. So I wasn't, you know, trying to look it up on my phone at that moment because it hadn't happened before. So we shall see if we like the song in its original state. Oh, this is very stripped back. Oh, this is the so good part. I remember hearing that. So, so good. What is so good, Rosalia? Her voice is so delicate, but it still shows that she is a flamenco singer at the same time. You can tell that she could belt it out. Oh, what is that noise? It's so good. Sounds like a machine gun. Are you adding video game noises again, Rosalia? Definitely mixing aggressive and delicate sounds. Oh, they heard her say hentai. So that was the song hentai. All right, Rosalia, you finally have a song that I can't really talk about its lyrics, really, without a threat of demonetization. If you want to know about it, just look up lyrics, hentai, 
say search on, please. Because this song is essentially just about that. And essentially just falling in love with a person in an intimate and explicit way. And it is done in a very romantic way. And I do appreciate that rather than just intimacy just for intimacy sake. Not that I'm against intimacy for intimacy sake, but I feel like it makes sense more in the album of having it feel romantic and sensual all at once. I need to hear this song again because the song, it feels like a ballad in a way. And then there's the machine gun sound, which I think it has to do with the, the pistol that she's in love with. I'm not gonna talk about that further, but you can make your own conjectures. Yes, yes you can. <laughs> yeah, I would say this song gets a little more explicit than I thought Rosalie would, but power to her. I love to see it. I will say I found it hilarious that this song doesn't have a ton of streams on Spotify relative to its other songs, but I believe it has the most clicks on Genius lyrics. So some people wanted to know what the heck was going on there. <laughs> But yeah, I think I'm going to personally need more time with this. I didn't know where we were going. And now I'm glad I know where we are. Track numero siete, biscochito. A little cake or a cookie or something like that. Okay. Already about. I feel like I've heard this even though I most certainly haven't. It just gives classic energy. Oh, I like this voices. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Ooh, I like those voices. This song is trying to make me twerk, even though I'm definitely not capable of doing that. Oh, they really have just isolated these da da da's. So that was Biscochito. A vibe. A total 100% bop. I like this one a lot. It's fun. This song is saying, I'm not going to be your baby cakes. I'm not gonna just be your little sweetheart. I am my own person and I am going to do what I want to do. And this album is really proven that she really just does whatever the heck she wants. And I'm a fan. She gets really candid on this song. She says, I didn't base my career on making hits. And that's true, she didn't. Los Angeles is not what you want to make if you're trying to go commercial. No, it's not. So. You did that, and then you did Elmo Carrer, which this fusion, again, brought her into a lot of stardom. And now she's here, and she's like, I am making this album that I want to make, and it's going to be fun as heck. And she's not wrong. It is fun as heck. <laughs> Biscochito is a reference to the Sayoko song that Sayoko is from, but the original one that Daddy Yankee is a part of. And in the song, the guy says, who are you? And the female voice says, your baby cakes or two biscochito. But she's not gonna be anyone's biscochito. She is gonna be her own person. She doesn't need a man. Who does these days? Yeah, this is a total fun song. It's so short, it's under two minutes, but I can see myself just really having a fun time with it. Track numero ocho, G3 and 15. Or perhaps, he tres and a I'm trying my best with my Spanish, y'all. I'm, I'm doing what I can. Oh, we're being quiet again? Her voice is so sweet again. Her voice is so good. Una cantora. What did she say? Ooh, bring that power, Rosalia. Okay, bring in some keyboards. Have its moment. Oh. From the little voice memo time. Keyboards coming back in with this voice memo. Okay. So that was G3 and 15, or it could be Henis. It's referring to Rosalia's nephew, I think. Cool. But this song is about her wishing she could spend more time with her nephew or just a loved one in general. And yeah, that makes sense. There was a pandemic 
and also she was making an album. And so it makes sense that she might not always be in the best state of mind or even just the best location to be around someone she loves. The end has a voice memo from her grandmother that was sent to her during quarantine and talks about how God and family should be important to her. And so I think that since she put it in the record, I assume that she finds God and family to be of utmost importance to her, especially compared to the fame that while she can flex if she wants, she is also trying to put her heart into what matters the most to her, which is again, God and family. I appreciate the song for what it is, I don't know how much I want to listen to it. It is pretty slow and quiet, but again, we'll have to hear that when I can have some more volume and better sound quality, because I think that could make the song a little better. I also noticed the line of, this isn't El Mal Carrer, it's the evil desire. This album is not El Mal Carrer, but there is this desire for her to be with him, but since it can't come true right now, uh, it was evil for her to make that wish. I don't know if I agree with that. I think she's just making a play on words and that. To me, that doesn't really follow through, but I thought it was clever what she's doing. She's definitely trying to take this album into a more confessional state and talk about actually her life and her existence as someone in the public eye, which I do normally like a lot of those albums. It just is definitely a big change of pace for Rosalia to talk about that in her music. So I wasn't really prepared, but we'll take it now. Track numero nueve, Molto Mami, the album title. Okay. Molto Mami, let's go. Okay, Molto Mami. <laughs> oh, speed up that Motomami. Motomami, Motomami, Motomami. Hey. So that was Motomami. Cool. That was most of the lyrics in the song. Motomami, Motomami, Motomami. It's a vibe, I guess. It's an interlude, for sure. The song definitely has a lot of swagger. She's saying, we hit like tsunami. We're raw like sashimi. We are thin like origami. She is using a lot of Japanese references in this music. I don't think she went to Japan during the pandemic. She was here. All right, maybe she had some fun in like a Japan town or something like that. She also says, I don't wanna compete if there's no comparison. So really this song is about being your bad self and I'm not gonna complain about that. I can always use that from Rosalia. It is a short song, however, and Honestly, there wasn't a lot that stuck with me because there's probably like three sections. There's the da da matamami, then there's that verse, and then it goes back to that, and then the motamami, motamami, motamami. And that all happens in just a minute. So there's not a lot to hold on to and grapple with, but it's fun. Track numero diez, Diablo. What in the devil are we gonna have? Oh, her voice is high-pitched, falsetto time. Okay, this kind of has similar sounds to Sayoko. This song also makes me want to shake my butt. <laughs> All right. Is this just her voice distorted or is this someone else singing it? Because this is definitely Rosalia. It sounds nothing like that other voice. Oh, we're getting a little glitchy. We on the same album? Okay. There's some auto tune there. Did Arca help with this song? It feels a little like it. So it's Diablo and a song. After looking up the lyrics, I barely remember what it sounds like, which is not good, but I think I just need to hear it again. I think. With 16 songs, especially, and since I stop between each of them, I think I start losing the pace of the album a little bit. And so I'll definitely need to listen to it 
straight through without interruptions. I think that'll be the best for me. Diablo is tackling critiques and that's why some of the voices don't sound like Rosalia because it is all about, oh, you don't make music you make anymore. The person on TV is not the person who I met. You sold out, you've changed, you are just flooring Lamborghinis and I'm not a fan of it. And Rosalie is standing up for herself, saying she's always gonna stay true to herself and be loyal uh, to her art, regardless of what works commercially, what money would float her way one way or the other. And she's also saying that her success happened very quickly, like overnight. Not that she hadn't been working on it before, but that the growth that she experienced from being not very successful to highly successful happened very quickly. And so that's why it might seem that she's changed, even though she could have just evolved naturally, but because the change to her happened quickly, it's more noticeable to other people. I think that's what she's trying to say here. And it makes sense. The song again is a, another one that I'm going to need to listen to again in order to really appreciate. Also, James Blake was in there. That was the voice that I heard. And I was like, I don't think that's Rosalia. Like, I definitely don't think that's Rosalia. And it's not. So they collaborated on more than just Barefoot in the Park. But that also means that we might have some other hidden collaborations here. I do not know if we will, but The Weeknd and there's one later, Tokisha, who are both formally recognized as features. But James Blake is not featured here, so. I don't know why he doesn't get a, a full feature, but I'm glad to get his presence again. I haven't dove in into his work past the song Barefoot in the Park. So if there's another song from him or an album from him that you would like me to react to, please let me know. Track numero 11, Delirio de Grandeza. Ooh, we got some brass in here. This definitely gives Spanish vibes. This also, some of the brass reminds me of an old movie. Delirio de Grandeza. Also music for some European restaurant. It gives that vibe. Okay, we got some voices underneath the surface here. Well, I think it's kind of coming to the surface a little bit. Oh, another cut off. So that was Delirio de Grandeza. What a song. <laughs> what a song. Okay, so this song is also about fame. And I think the woman she's talking to in this song is just the female personification of fame. And so, okay. This song, it has this valid structure and then we get a random interlude in it, which is Soldier Boy, which is like a remixed feature from a previous work of his, where he's saying, kiss me through the phone while I lick you just like licorice. And that this is ridiculous and other stuff like that. I don't know. This song is a little more of a question mark for me. I would say that this song is about her realizing that fame is not all it's cracked up to be and that some of the glamour that surrounds celebrity status and fame she was drawn to that but that's the delusion or the delirium of grandeur that she previously had and now she's like oh well shoot this kind of sucks sometimes so yeah i don't really know what to make of it it's a very interesting song a lot like and tie in the way that there was the random machine gun noises and then we had this other ballad set. It felt like we had two very big contrasting elements to it and I don't really know exactly what to make of it. Track numero doce, cute. At least that's how I'm going to interpret how you say it. Wait, this sounds like a melody I'm familiar with. Oh, what in the arc is this? Okay. Oh, Mariposa, another butterfly reference. 
cute. I, I did say it the same way as she does. I can't get as high as her, but I'll try. <laughs> Ballad. <laughs> Did she just say gasoline in the most angelic voice I've ever heard? Oh no, we're going back in it. Oh wait, this sounds like an Electro Rex, like knockoff. <laughs> not a knockoff, that makes it sound like I'm diminishing it. I'm not trying to. Oh, that gun noise is back. There you go. So that was cute, and that was fun. I had a good time. It was very fast. It was fun, deconstructed club vibes. It feels like an Arca song. I looked it up. It's not an Arca song, but it was probably influenced by her collaboration with Arca previously. I wish they collaborated on this album though. I need some more Arca Rosalia collabs. They do it very well. <laughs> but the song was fun, I think it's kind of her version of Humble from Kendrick and that she's like, keep it cute. The best artist here is God. You need to chill out. I think it's really just a sense of humility that either she's telling herself or she's telling other people like, you need to chill, relax. It's not that serious. You need to calm down. <laughs> but this song is the opposite of calm. It's fun. It gets me hype. It makes me want to dance. I had a good time with this. This apparently was the song that people thought Frank Ocean would be featured on, which I know we're all waiting for Frank Ocean to release music, again on his terms, but I know so many people who, if Frank Ocean said he was releasing a project tomorrow, they'd go after it so much. So I know it's disappointing that he didn't have that feature on here, but I think the song is really fun even without that. The song is very cute. Track number 13, Como Un G, or Como Un G. I don't know if it's a, like a G, like how you call it a cool person or something. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Hopefully we'll find out. Dang, this is quiet, but like very pretty. Of course, this is, again, so beautiful. I know I say that a lot, but I can't get over it. Oh, Como Un G. Oh, something's growing in the production. I feel like this song is gonna make me cry and I don't even know what she's singing about. Oh, she's doing several commands there. I could tell that. Oh, there's definitely some synthesizer and some interesting production there. It's like it's coming to a culmination. This twinkling, it's very pretty. So that was Como Un G. That song really was gonna make me cry without me knowing it. And now that I know what she's talking about, I might just go on. But allergies are still happening, so I can use that excuse. This song, this beautiful ballad that I did have a hard time, again, paying attention to. It is pretty late at night, so I don't know why I do these reactions sometimes pretty late, but they can inhibit my ability to really feel the record fully, but it also is track 13. And so track 13, the first time around, will never work regardless of how good the album is. I just gotta get into it first. This song is about her loving a person that she knows she can't be with long term. She has to actually just let that person go. Even though she loves that person, she knows that that love cannot last. And maybe that person has moved on, maybe they haven't. But she knows that she will still have love in her heart for them, even though it might not be reciprocated, that it might not be something that she can fully send that person's way. She doesn't write love songs, but in this case, she bends over backwards for that person. So this person really is special to her life. And she's saying that as a G, as a gangster, or just as someone she cares about a lot, that she means this very sincerely. and. Oh, I don't know. I just in a very specific situation uh, right now in my life that this song hits for. So, okay. 
Yeah, I have to give props where props are due. She makes the song sound beautiful. It's Rosalia's voice after all. She can't make a song not sound beautiful, but the song's lyrics have hit me at the exact time in which it will inflict the most damage. So kudos to you, Rosalia. But why'd you have to do it? <laughs> but yeah, definitely a song I need to hear again now that I know the context because I think it might be my sad song for the summer. Track numero 14, A, B, C, D, E, F, E, H, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I do not know what language it's gonna be in, but it, the song title does remind me of the Spanish alphabet song I remember hearing in my Spanish class. It was like a military drill. It was A, B, C, G, D, E, F, E, A, B, C, G, D, E, F, E, H, A, G, E, H, O, T, K, H, A, G, E, H, O, T, K. I don't need to keep going, but it was, again, a whole drill. And I heard that song in like several of my Spanish classes. It wasn't just one. It was just like, oh, do we need to really refresh our memory in the alphabet? And I was like, no, it's really just four additional sounds to our alphabet. And that's it. It's just the ch, the double L, the n -ye. also the double R. I knew that was the fourth one. And I guess you could do accents, but they don't even have accents in that one. I don't really know, but it was a time. And I don't know if that will have anything to do with this song, but we'll find out. Oh, she's saying what each letter stands for, but I'm not gonna know those. Motomami? Okay. Oh, give some good rolled R's. Thank you, Rosalia. So it was A, B, C, D, E, F, A, H, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or the Motomami alphabet, as it was previously called, because apparently this was just meant to be in the press kit that was sent out for pre-orders. It wasn't meant to be a song on the album. But apparently Rosalia said that the track list was like a little heavy towards the end. And so she felt it needed a moment to breathe. And so you have this. So these, this is the alphabet. I'm not gonna listen to it regularly unless I'm listening to the album full. It doesn't really make sense. It's spoken word. Rosalia has a good sense of humor there when she just references her own Motomami song. Motomami, Motomami. <laughs> like I heard that before. Interestingly enough, K and L are not featured. Maybe that's a reference to K, okay. I don't know, but some of the letters in the alphabet are missing. This is a very spontaneous project. You can tell she is definitely having fun with this work and I'm all right with that. I think I am. It definitely is different than what I thought of when I thought of Rosalia. I felt like she was definitely someone who like crafted her work in a much more specific and perfectionistic way, but she's definitely loosening up here. Track numero 15, La Combi Versace featuring Tokisha. Okay, bring in that beautiful voice again. Oh, this must be some Tokisha coming in because I'm, I hear two different distinct voices. Kombi Versace. Oh yeah, you can tell their voices are mixing together now. Oh, that actually might be Tokisha. Yeah, they definitely have some interacting parts. So who is this voice then? Ooh, we're getting distorted and muffled vocals, my favorite. So that was La Combi Versace featuring Tokisha. Cool. That was a definitely a reggaeton flex track. It's fun. I don't know, I'm getting a little sleepy personally. And that's not against Rosalia, that's against my bad sleep schedule. My apologies, but this song, I think they sounded good together. I think I just need to hear it when I'm actually just listening to this album in full. Because if I hear this album in full, it's only 42 minutes, but I definitely have filmed for over two hours now. So you can tell it's starting to drag a little for me rather than it actually will be dragging. Probably not at all when I am actually listening to it in full. If anyone can tell me what La Combi Versace means, 
please let me know. I know Versace is obviously a brand, but I don't know what a combi is. I have no idea. The English translation still says it's combi. So if someone can explain that to me, please do. There's a lot of references to brands on this. They're talking about like having fun together in the night, that they're gonna be using checks and stuff like that. It's, it's a flex song. I get it. It's a mix of haute couture with some of the other songs that are on this project. It's a fun one. Like I, I think I'll enjoy it more, but I think I need to hear it when it's not track 15 and me looking at the lyrics each time. Track number on DS is Sis Sakura, El Ultimo track in this album. <laughs> That's my Spanglish for the day. We're gonna end with a live sounding song. Oh, this the cheering has gone crazier. Oh, I think we might be ending with a ballad. Ooh, someone whistling in the audience. Sakura, and she said it again so beautifully. Yeah, this feels like her flexing with her vocals. <laughs> also reminds me a little of hentai, but maybe that's because I first heard it live. Ooh, I can sit here, some piano, okay. I'm like, how do you do that type of vocal? I don't even get it, but I love it. <laughs> now that's some whistling. <laughs> Sing it, girl. Sing it out. Sing your entire heart out. So that was Sakura, and what a way to end this album. I really wish that I hadn't had to look for every lyric, because otherwise I feel like I would really like this song a lot more on the first listen. I really like this song a lot. It's gorgeous, first of all. Her vocals, incredible. It's amazing. She's amazing. This song is a really great way to end this album, which again has been a lot about fame and her new life as a pop star. And the song hits the nail on the head and saying, being a pop star never lasts, much like the Sakura flower, which is the Japanese name for the cherry blossom, which if you think of any plant from Japan, you might think of the cherry blossom. It's very iconic, it's very, I don't want to say charismatic because I feel like it's more used for animals than people, but if you think of a specific plant from Japan, you're probably thinking of the cherry blossom. And the cherry blossom is really interesting ecologically because it's so beautiful and such a staple in iconography for Japan. However, the flower itself only blooms for a very short period of time before, you know, the seasonal life cycle. The season of blooming is very brief. And so she's saying that like a Sakura flower being a pop star, it doesn't last. And so she will have moved on from it when she's 60 or 80 or another age. And she is going to enjoy it while she can, even if it is for a brief time. I feel like this puts her at her most raw and her genuine on here. I feel like some of the other songs on here kind of cover up that sense of trying to retain true to oneself by putting a lot of swagger on it. And while some of that swagger just saying, oh, I'm always gonna be loyal, money ain't everything. It's nice to hear it in this metaphor. I think it makes it much more appealing to me and not like just what I hear from, I don't wanna say like a lot of rap artists, but I feel like there's many artists who can just say, oh, money isn't everything and just, saying it in a song versus just saying it out loud doesn't necessarily always make a difference. So hearing in this metaphor that is pretty much timeless, I feel like it works a little bit better for her. I also love the last two lines of this song so much. The lyrics, oh my God, I might butcher this and obviously I'm using the English translation, but it just hit when I read it. It was fire is beautiful because it's not afraid to burn and fire is beautiful because it breaks everything or destroys everything. It's a great couplet right there. And that is just so beautiful. It's very inspiring, very motivational. And the way you end your album like that, Rosalia, okay. 
I feel you. I love that. Thank you so much. With that said, we have finished this album. I have to say, I'm tired. But I think I had a good time. I think it'll show in my favorites at the end that there's going to be more songs on here that I like than I don't like. And I think the ones I don't like might just be like more in the middle rather than a dislike. Just because I think there's some songs that do the work of other songs. So I don't need three of the same or similar type song for me to feel okay with it. I can just use the one song that I really personally enjoy rather than the three that do. I don't have ones directly in mind right now, but I overall enjoyed it. I think it's cool to hear about Rosalia's life in the public eye. It's not something I necessarily expected, even though Sayoko and La Fama do have those leanings and those tendencies. I mean, La Fama being literally the fame. I think she does tackle fame pretty heavily on this album and she tackles it head on. I just don't know if I would say that not everything is not repetitive. I think there are points where there is some repetition that maybe is it intended to be there so that you really pick it up each time because obviously she's gonna say a lot in a 16 song project. But she definitely covers her bases, I think, sometimes a little more than I would feel necessary. But she's not afraid to also be a little silly. Like, A, B, C, D, F, G, it's fun. <laughs> it's just a little silly interlude. Moda Mami is a little pretty, I don't know, it's not a silly interlude, but it is another interlude. This track list is a little long for me, I will say that. I do think probably like 14 songs is probably where I would cut off an album. Like 10 to 14 is generally good in my sense. But I'm again, I'm not her. And if she thinks that all 16 tracks are necessary, good for her. It's her art. And I don't want to sound that critical of it. I do like what I've heard. I am also just tired. And it takes a lot of effort, definitely, for me to do all these translated works. But for Rosalia, I'll do anything. Scratch that, I don't want to be held liable and sued or framed or anything like that. So I won't do anything for Rosalia, but I'll do the work. There's definitely some gems on here. I just definitely need to listen to it again to really pick those out. The first listen can be sometimes a doozy. This one was definitely a doozy for me, but I'm glad I finally got around to it. With that said, here are some of my favorites of the top tier of songs I love, the standout songs I've been playing over and over. Songs in the middle are songs I like, add them to my playlist, but they're not gonna be the top of the top. And then songs at the bottom are just not really my thing. Doesn't mean they're a bad song, doesn't mean they can't be your favorite song. Just means it's probably not for me. And that's okay. Rosalia didn't make this album with me in mind, but I had a good time anyway. If you liked this video, please like it, please comment down below what you'd like me to react to or do next on my channel. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not ready and you'd like to be. And thanks for watching. This is Charles Schumer. Catch you later. Get out of the zone and get in the mind.